In this video, we'll see the list decoding capacity theorem, which pins down the best trade-off between the rate r and the list decoding radius p for a list decodable code. Informally, the list decoding capacity theorem says that the capacity for list decoding, that is the best possible trade-off between the rate r and the radius p, is r equals 1 minus the Q-area entropy of p. More formally, we have the following theorem. Let q be greater than or equal to 2, and let p be greater than 0 and less than 1 minus 1 over q, and let epsilon be greater than 0. Then the following two things hold. First, if the rate r is just a little bit less than this threshold, 1 minus hq of p, so say it's that minus epsilon, then there are good list decodable codes of that rate up to radius p. In particular, there exists a family of QRE codes that are p comma big O of 1 over epsilon list decodable. So p here is the list decoding radius, and this big O of 1 over epsilon, that's the list size, capital L. So this says that if the rate is not too big, if it's just a smidge less than this capacity here, then there are codes of that rate so that any Hamming ball of radius p times n has at most big O of 1 over epsilon code words in it. On the other hand, thing 2, if the rate is a little bit bigger than that capacity, that is 1 minus the QRA entropy of p plus epsilon, then any list decodable family with radius p and list size l has to have l exponentially large, at least q to the omega of n. So the second thing is saying that if the rate is too big, just a little bit bigger than the capacity, then we cannot hope to have any sort of decent guarantee on list decodability. We're always going to have an exponential number of code words in any Hamming ball of radius p times n. Before we prove this statement, let's interpret this quantity here. In particular, that might look a little bit familiar. So let's return to our plot here that we had before. So here p, the fraction of errors, is on the x-axis, and r, the rate, is on the y-axis. And what we see is that the list decoding capacity theorem, 1 minus the QRA entropy of p, this picture is for q equals 2, is exactly the same as both the Hamming bound and Shannon's theorem for the binary symmetric channel. So the takeaway here is that if Bob is allowed to return a short list in the setting with worst case errors, then Alice and Bob can do as well as they could with random errors, even though the errors are worst case. In particular, we can let p get arbitrarily close to a half and still have positive rate and have a good list decodable code. On the other hand, the Plotkin bound says that for worst case errors, if I want p to be that large, in fact any larger than a quarter, then I have no hope of being able to uniquely decode from a p fraction of worst case errors, at least for binary codes. So this says that if Alice and Bob are willing to make this sacrifice to return just a little bit of a short list, they can get huge gains in terms of the amount of error that they can tolerate. Okay, so let's prove the list decoding capacity theorem. We'll start with bullet point one, which says that there exist good list decodable codes. So we're gonna do this proof by the probabilistic method we're just going to pick a completely random code and show that with high probability it does the job. So let enc, which maps sigma to the k to sigma to the n, be a completely random encoding map. We would like to show that as long as the rate is a little bit less than that 1 minus the QRE entropy of p, the code c, that is the image of this random encoding map, is p comma l list decodable for l not too large. To show this, let's think about what it means to not be list decodable. It means that the picture looks like this. So here's sigma to the k, here's sigma to the n, our encoding map maps the one to the other, and our code c, which is the image of the encoding map, is not p comma l list decodable if there exists some set of L plus one messages that all map into some Hamming ball. 
That is, suppose that I have L plus one messages here. Let's call this set lambda. My code C, which is the image of this random encoding map, fails to be list decodable if all of these things land close to some received word Y. So let's say here's Y, and here's the Hamming ball around Y of radius PN. And then let's say that all of these messages here happen to map to points inside that ball. This would mean that the code is not list decodable because here's a ball that has more than L points in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute the probability over this random encoding that this happens, and then we're gonna show that it's unlikely that it happens for any lambda. And that will mean that the code is list decodable with high probability. In more detail, let's fix such a lambda. And let's pick such a y. Now let's compute the probability that this bad event happens. So the probability that the encoding of the set lambda lives in the Hamming ball about y of radius pn. OK, so the probability that any one of these points ends up in this ball is just the volume of the ball divided by the volume of the whole space. And since the encoding map is completely random, the event that this guy lands in the ball and the event that this guy lands in the ball and this one and that one and so on are all independent. So I can compute the probability that all of these land in the ball by just raising this probability to the L plus one. And now we can use our handy dandy approximation of the volume of Hamming balls to say that this is less than or equal to two to the minus N times one minus the QRE entropy of P, all times L plus one. Okay, so that's the probability that this bad event happens for a fixed lambda and for a fixed Y. Now we need to union bound over all such lambdas and all such Ys. So the probability that there exists such a lambda and a Y, such that this bad event occurs, Okay, so this is at most by the union bound q to the k choose l plus one. That's the number of possible sets lambda times q to the n. That's the number of possible y's times this probability here. Now I'm going to bound this binomial coefficient here by q to the k choose l plus one is less than or equal to q to the k times L plus one. And I'm also going to use the fact that K is equal to R times N to bound this whole thing by Q to the N times R plus one minus HQ of P all times L plus one plus one. Now we can use our assumption that the rate is not too large to say that this thing is at most q to the n times one minus epsilon times L plus one. And this is q to the minus big omega of n, provided that L is big enough. In particular, we can take L to be big O of one over epsilon and still have L be big enough. So we conclude that a random code C is P comma L is decodable with high probability and in particular, such a code exists. So that proves statement one of the list decoding capacity theorem. Now let's prove the second statement. We need to show that any code with slightly too large a rate must have a really big list size. That is, there must be some Hamming ball that contains a lot of code words. So let's suppose that C is such a code, so it has rate a little bit bigger than one minus HQ of P. And we need to show that there exists some y so that the Hamming ball of radius pn about y has a lot of code words in it. Our strategy is once again the probabilistic method. We're going to choose a random y and show that in expectation this quantity is big. That will imply that there exists a y so that this quantity is big. To do that, let's consider fixing some particular code word in C. 
Now let's compute the probability over choosing a random y that c lives in this Hamming ball. Here, c is fixed, and the center of the Hamming ball is random, but we might as well think about it the other way around. We might as well think about the Hamming ball as being fixed and c as being random. So then the probability that this occurs is once again just the volume of that Hamming ball divided by the volume of the entire space. And as before, this is approximately q to the minus n times the 1 minus the qRA entropy of p. OK, so that's just for a single code word. But now we can use this, along with linearity of expectation, to compute the expectation of this quantity. We have that the expected number of code words that happen to live in that Hamming ball, where the expectation is over a random y, is, by linearity of expectation, the sum over all code words in the code of the probability over y that c lives in that Hamming ball, which we just computed is approximately size of c times q to the minus n, 1 minus qRA entropy of p. Now how large is c? c has size q to the k, which is q to the rn, and we've assumed that r is at least this large. So this is at least q to the n times 1 minus hq of p plus epsilon times q to the minus n, 1 minus hq of p. Now stuff cancels, and this is just equal to q to the epsilon n, which is indeed q to the omega of n, which is what we claimed. So this shows that in expectation over y, the Hamming ball centered at y contains exponentially many code words, and in particular, such a y must exist. So that proves part two, and that proves the entire theorem. OK, so we've just shown the list decoding capacity theorem. Check. The list decoding capacity theorem tells us what the right trade-off between the rate r and the error radius p is for list decoding, assuming that the list size is a large enough constant. However, as we just saw, the proof was definitely not constructive and does not come with efficient algorithms. In the next video, we will start to address the question of how we can achieve this, or at least something non-trivial, with explicit constructions.